Good morning. Today's Bible lesson will be on Esther. But before we begin, please stand for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again, with life and liberty for all who believe. Now to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will light God's word. I will hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with a grateful heart. Lord, thank you for providing, for equipping people um, that could come to our rescue, that could come and help us, that could come and teach us, that could be that iron that rubs against us and makes us better. I thank you. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for the world. We pray for individuals that are not obedient, and even though in the midst of everything that's happening, they continue to live their way and not worry about what's happening. Lord, um, I know that throughout the times, um, there have been many foolish people, and this is a foolish time. Lord, I pray that people become aware, little by little, and they open their eyes to the truth and look at you and look toward salvation. Lord, I pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, let's recite our Bible verse. So our Bible verse is Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 through 26. And it reads, let's read together. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to call to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of, the, of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Well, today's lesson is on Esther. And some of the names in this story would be, obviously, Esther, which is the main character of our story. Uh, Ahasuerus, which is the king. We have a new king now, Ahasuerus. And they live in a city called Asusan. They're also, at the beginning of our story, we have a queen, and her name is Vashiti. And we also have another character called Mordecai. So let's begin with our story. As we already know, the people of Israel were um, disobedient to God. And because of their disobedience, God punished them by exiling them to Babylon. They were in Babylon exiled for 70 years. While they were in exile, God lifted up prophets that alerted the Jewish people of what his plans were. Um, he lifted up a, a, um, like Daniel, and Daniel told them that the empire that was going to liberate them was going to be um, the Middle Persians. Um, he also lifted up other prophets that told, sorry, that told him or told the people that it was only going to be for 70 years. So peop the Jewish people knew what God's plan were. They knew that they weren't going to stay in Babylon forever. So in the time of Jeremiah, like we know, Jeremiah went to Jerusalem, and when he went to Jerusalem, he took some people with him. Um, those people stayed living in Jerusalem, but some people stayed in Babylon. Some Jewish people still stayed in Babylon, because one, they didn't want to go through the trouble of 
leaving their homes where they were nice and comfortable to go all the way to Jerusalem and to start all over again, build houses, build a wall and go through all that, that trouble. That's one reason. Another reason was because they were too old for the journey. So they decided not to go. So um, we're in the kingdom of the men of Persians and the, that kingdom extends all the way from Ethiopia, which is in, e in Africa, to East India. So all of that was the kingdom of Ethiopia. So it, all of this came to pass. And now we're with the king Arsersis and Ahasuerus. So Ahasuerus being the king, um, he was in his, his brand new king. In his third year being king, he decided, I'm all that and I'm going to throw this party. So he sends invitation throughout the lands and he invites all of the princesses and all of the other um major um, people of importance from the other countries and he has this big party for 180 days while he was doing all this partying um, and the reason for the partying was because he wanted to show off everything he had right look at me look at me look how shiny look everything that I have I I I so in that thought of me, 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 and I have, I have, and he was a little bit too, had drank a little bit too much. Remember, they're partying 180 days. He came up with this idea that he would send for his wife, Vashiti, that he would send for her, and he would show her off, and he would, wanted to show her beauty at the time that he was doing this banquet where he was with all of the men, Vashiti, on the other hand, was with all of the women and she was hosting a banquet for the women. So the soldiers came in, they announced what the king wanted and Vashiti refused to go because she is not an object, one, and he just wanted to show her off. And she did not approve of that, and she did not go. And this made the king very, very, very upset. Because he was so upset, he um, eliminated her from being queen. She was queen no more. And he did a decree which um, telling men that they needed to be head up, that they needed to be in charge and they needed to control their women and they needed it to do whatever it needed to be. Unfortunately, yes, men are the head of the household, but it's not to do whatever you need to do, meaning mistreating your wives. That's not what the Bible calls you to do. The Bible calls men to leave their house and to love their women like Christ loved the church. So that means that they would not do any harm to their wife if they wouldn't do that same harm to Christ. So they needed to treat their wives like they would treat Christ. So moving on. So Vashiti didn't come. He took the queenship away from her. She was not queen no longer, and she couldn't come into his presence. So she was hidden somewhere in the palace. And the wise men saw, it, it came to pass, that um, a, cert, uh, a, a hazardous became sad because he missed Vashiti. And the people around him, the wise men around him, said it was time for him to get a new queen. So they sent out a decree for the men to go out and find all of the beautiful women, all of the beautiful virgin women in, in the land, and to bring them to the palace. And that's where our main character comes in. Our main character's name is Esther. And Esther lives with her cousin Morde Mordecai. Um, Esther's parents died. And after Esther's parents died, Mordecai um, took care of her. And she, they had a very, very good relationship. And she obeyed him in everything that he said. 
when the decree and she also was a beautiful appearance so when the decree came to collect all of the virgins of the country um, she was taken to the palace when the virgins were taken to the palace they um, they are treated and groomed and they are they for for a whole year the first six months they're um, sp spread with oils and alabaster and they all everything has to do with the exterior beauty and then for the other six months they do other lotions and other senses and herbs and everything has to do with the exterior appearance one thing that Esther had different than the other than the other candidates for queen was that Esther also had the knowledge of God so she had inner beauty too she was meek and quiet and that separated her from the other candidates so it came the year came to pass that it was time for Esther to meet the king and immediately that Esther met the king he immediately um, saw favor in her and chose her over all of the other maidens that were there for that candidacy she also fell in favor with the main guard of that took care of all of the women um, because the women will be in a separate part of the palace and there were special guards that would take care of them and she fell in favor with him and he would put do favors for her he she was in the best place um, he um, he made sure that she was well taken care of and while she was in the palace Mordecai will come every day and walk through the palace gates to see if she was doing well so it came to pass that the king was so enamored with Esther that he made her the new queen at during all this time Esther had no knowledge of what her purpose is and many times in our life we have no idea why is why we're going through the things that we're going through and for what purpose God is having us go through these things but the Bible says that everything works for the good of those who love the Lord and in the midst of everything that's happening at this time that she's being crowned queen she has no idea what it is to come and that God has placed her there for a purpose so further on in the story we're going to learn what is Esther's purpose what is God's purpose for Esther at this time and this concludes our lesson for today see you later